some genes use regulation. They target multiple sites in the genome. That is the you know, what we call it. that is the most uh, very likely the most control factor. But why is the complex trait here? Because in this in this setting, okay, we trade the gene expression after a uh, complicated trait. Okay? But here again, you work with you know, to, to work out the regulator of gene expression. Okay? To do that, we assume or we treat the expression of the genes as a quantitative trait. What is a quantitative trait? Okay. A quantitative trait is the trait controlled by a few genes of major effect plus environmental modification. Okay, the trait like that whose phenotype variation or phenotypic variation of the trait is controlled genetically but not one gene, several genes. Those genes have a major effect on the phenotypic variation of the trait. And also, the phenotypic variation of the trait can be modified by environment. Okay. In other words, the performance of the, of the trait phenotype is also affected by, by environment, by both genetics and the environment. So this is very common. A okay. lot of biological characters, they share this common creature in the phenotypic variation. Okay, for example, height. Human height, plant height, animal height, the height of the human being. Definitely is controlled by genes. Even not by individual genes. Okay? Because you know, tall parents intended to give the tall child children the children, the height of the children is higher. Okay. What the proportion of the phenotypic variation of height is controlled by genetics? Do you have any idea? To what extent human height is genetically controlled? Have you any idea? This is very common. <laughs> Answer him. Well, you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Can you, you know, basically what you said. Can you repeat my question to her? What? Sorry. I'm trying to think. No, no, no. I'm not going to answer what I'm saying. I, I asked, sorry, I did not make it clear. I asked you to repeat my question to her. So, what? That's a genetic um, control type. So you're sort of asking how it controls that. So how much, to what extent, human height is genetically controlled. And she said 20%. He said, you said 20%? Yeah. And then? I think there are like 700 genes. Or, uh, I don't know, to what extent. Yeah. OK. And any questions? So basically, using the genomics data, you know, the most updated one, the figure is about 80%. In other words, high phenotypic variation, phenotypic variation of the human height. Or well, 80% of variation in human height can be attributed to variation at your genome or genetically controlled. Yes, of course. Okay? Yeah, some people have to properly. This height, this phenotype is also controlled by effect by environment. 
Okay, if you kids living in a very good condition, okay, involves a lot of exercise that help to boost her or his height. Okay, yes, of course, height, weight, crop year, or even intelligence, IQ. Okay, is also control the share this common feature of quantitative traits. Okay, the gene location of genes involved in controlling gene, uh, quantitative traits has a name that is called quantitative trait no sum, OQPR for short. Okay. So, so when you when you say keep here, you you mean the gene that controls that trait. Yeah. Okay. Keep here is more precisely is the location, the genome location of the genes affecting one particular quantitative trait. Okay. okay. So some people probably confuse that with the so the QTR is the genes for for the quantitative change. Okay. Basically more precisely it's the genome region which contains the gene affecting a uh, quantitative trait under question. Okay. So what is the genetic genomics? Genetic genomics address the relationship among the three. Okay, the genotype means the structure of your genome. Okay, DNA sequencing structure. As uh, probably yeah, we know, the you know, human, human beings within the human being population will share about uh, what percentage of sequence variation You understand my question? So what proportion of genome sequencing variation we share with the human population? 99.9%? I mean the variation. Oh. We share the same numerical, 99%, you know, the 1%. So in other words, only randomly choosing two persons, they probably are averaging 1% of their sequencing differ. Okay, so that problem is what we call the genotype, and also the expression. We know we have the you know the sum of ten sums of genes that, that you know express. So that is what we, we have the idea. We have the way maybe to profile the expression of the all those genes in the genome. That is the expression. Yes, of course, phenotype. For example, the, the phenotype of the trait you're working with is a, okay, yield of a crop, milk production of cattle, okay, and the reproductive barrier in terms of species. All those characters, biological characters, they share a common feature, which is phylogenetic control, environmental mo modification. So those traits, those characters are called quantitative traits. Okay? Or trying to build the relationship of these three, of these three. First of all, I will tell you how to do it. Okay, we build the relationship between genotype and the phenotype. How to do that? So, for example, you are working with the, the trait phenotype. Okay, the height of crop. Okay, milk production of animals. Okay, uh, one particular disease, for example, lung cancer. Okay, of a human being. How to build, for example, better stasis of the cancer cell 
and uh, the sequence of variation of the individuals. That is kind of the way. What we can do, this is called mapping QTL in segregating population. I give you a simple example about how to bridge genotype and the phenotypic variation of uh, complex traits or quantitative traits. So now, in medical world, as the people more and more, you know, cost them to call quantitative traits as complex traits because the genetic control is very complicated. So they call them complex traits. How to build this relationship? between sequence variation and the phenotypic variation of the quantitative traits. This discussion is given under a simplest case, what we call it in a segregating population. Okay? The first step is to create a segregation, segregation population. What is the segregating population look like? This is a diagram here. So for example, you have two lines. That could be two different genotypes of the cross for animals, P1 and the P2. Their chromosome colors have different colors. One is red, one is blue. That means they differ. Okay, to some extent. Okay, and then they put cross them, cross them, make them cross. So they get as an F1 individual. Yes, of course, this F1 individual gets one chromosome from each of their parents. So the one red chromosome and the wrong blue chromosome. Not okay? Okay? This is basic genetics. And then, this F1 individuals intercross each other. So for example, in plants, you're collecting the pollen from one F1 individual and the food into the Stick them up and not the H1 individual. Or you make the blood system making of the mouse. So that is the animal system. So they make it that way. And then the generating next the generation. F2. Okay. F1 definitely. They are heterozygous at all concerned loci. Because one red chromosome and another blue chromosome they are heterozygous. Okay? However, after the intercrossing is one F1 individual generating F2, you can say the chromosome makeup contains you know, the different segments of their parental genetic their chromosomes. So for example, this individual, this bit comes from P1, and this bit comes from P2, via recombination. Okay? So in other words, within an F2 population, there is a segregation of the parental lines, P1 and P2. So you can say this, this is a segregation of parental chromosomes in this population. Of course, that kind of population, segregating population. Segregating and the recombination. So in other words, that is the product of the chromosome segregating and the recombination of their parental lines. You got it? Okay. 
they may have the very, very different makeups of their chromosome constituents. So they put it on some of the chromosomes, they inherit it in text. Some of the chromosomes, they have more set of their parental things through segregating and recombination. So this is the one type of the chromosome, uh, the segregating population. And also, you can create the segregating population in another different way. Again, you're using your F1 individual. And this F1 back cross to one of the parental lines. For example, here, back cross to P2. Okay. And then the generation, the go to what is the back cross to population, you can say, Again, in this population, okay, the contents, the population contains recombination and the segregation of their parental lines, parental chromosomes. You can see. What is the difference of these two? They all call segregating population. What's the difference of these two? So all the loci are F2, they're always heterozygous, whereas BT, you get some homozygous don't they? Yeah, the, your, your idea is definitely correct, but I'm not uh, um, heterozygous or homozygous. No, those are not beings heterozygous or, or homozygous. You know, for the example, what I would say is, in backwards population, one chromosome is keep intact, okay? They keep it the same. Okay? Only, only one chromosome involves recombinant. However, in F2, okay, both chromosomes may involve recombinations of their parental chromosomes. So in other words, two chromosomes Okay, they involve the chromosome, in, but they may, they, they, they may involve, or may not, for example, this case, they may involve recombinants. But this one, only one chromosome is a product of the recombination. <coughs> because one chromosome must keep the same. So, in other words, on average, this segregating population then carry twice as much of recombinant as this one. Okay, this is what I, what you said. What's your name? Okay, Ali, what is what I said? You know, this is the precise word. All the homozygous or heterozygous. Okay, it's about recombinant. Okay, so those are segregating populations. We use this kind of genetic makeup of the population as a basis to develop a relationship between the genotype and the phenotype of quantitative traits. How can we do this is a segregating population? Okay, you get an idea. Segregating population allows recombination between parental chromosomes. Recombination may involve only one chromosome at the back of the population or both chromosomes, like the F2 population. Okay? Got the idea? So, where is the population? Now, we we'll go one step forward to say what they are. There's the next one. So here we consider this a very, very simple model. Okay? This is your genotype, what is a marker? That means the location in the chromosome. Okay. The sequence is different between two methods. 
blue chromosome and a, and a red chromosome. So that the two chromosome, sorry, two parental lines that show the different nucleotide, for example, the sleep or sequence variants. This video, we use that kind of marker. Why are we using the marker? Because the first thing, okay, their location in the chromosome can't be precisely known. We know the location, this marker, where this, this location in the chromosome, in the, in the genome, is known. Because using the sequencing experiment, you can identify where the two lines differ in their genome. Okay? Okay? So that is what we call that kind of sequencing variant as a genetic marker. Okay? That genetic marker, the different configuration of genetic marker is their genotype. What we call the genotype information means the marker information. All the sequence of variant information. Got the idea? For example, sleep. Okay, some individual carries nucleotide AA, some individual carries nucleotide at precisely the same size in the genome as T. So they're different. They're labeled red or green. Or blue, sorry. Okay, you can go back to the previous slide. They are different. And then, we're working with one particular quantitative trait or complex trait. For example, blood pressure, or whatever, or yield, or whatever. Okay. First of all, I want to know where the genes locate. for the quantitative change. We call them QTR, quantitative change low side. Okay. We need to bridge a kind of genetic relationship between this sequencing variant or genetic marker and the genes affecting one particular quantitative trait. Got the idea? Okay, what is the simplest way to describe such a relationship? The simplest way is their location relationship. For example, whether or not this marker, this picture located on the same chromosome marked by this sequence variant. Okay? Whether or not on the same chromosome or not the same chromosome. If they are on the same chromosome, how closely this picture to locate to the marker whose general location is known? You got the idea? First of all, we don't know the same chromosome. Secondly, if they are on the same chromosome, how closely the picture related to the marker? Again, because the marker location in the genome is known. We know this. Indirectly, we are able to infer, to find out where is the location of the genes that control the quantitative traits. You call this, this logic. This is uh, basically the idea of what they do. And how to describe what the relationship. Okay, we know this is a simple, very simple parameter, the recombination frequency. In the segregating population, why are we dealing with the segregation? Because we need to allow the chromosome segregate, they combine in the population. How often the chromosome, 
chromosome segment, or two lobes are recombined with the population. The parameter described that often is, is called recombination frequency, very simple R. In diploid species, R takes the value between zero and a half. If R equal to zero, that means the two lobes are located at the same location because there is no recombination between them. Only those lobes are which are located very, very close Recombination is impossible. You cannot say recombination. That is one end. Another end, if the two lobes are freely recombined, take recombination frequency 50% or 0.5. That means the two chromosomes located on different chromosomes, right? This is the basic genetics. If the R takes a value more close to zero, that means that is the decrease of the genetic map distance between the two low sides. If the R takes a value very close to half, that means the two low side located at a very distant distance. Uh, Far away from the cross. So the one from one parameter, R, which is recombination frequency, fully characterizes relationship between the marker and the QPR. Good idea? Okay? So, how to do that and how to make this work? <coughs> so, for example, again, you have P1 and P2. Okay. P1 and P2 they differ at both marker and at the QTR. Okay, one is capital M, capital M, two alleles. Capital M, capital M is a homozygote of the two genes at the two low side. Okay, that's a little M, little Q. You may ask me, how do you know? How can you know the genotype of the QTR? Actually, we don't know. But we can make this true to a very high extent of confidence. I will tell you later how can we do that. Basically, we just make this two, you know, two genotypes. Like that is blue color and red color. Okay. And then we create segregating population. Okay. For example, we create a F2 population. We create you know, the F1 definitely is a factor zygote and it goes to no side. Do you have any problems so far? Okay, and then this two individual generated and the way generated a two population. This population contains little n individuals. We score each of the individual for the phenotype of the trait. For example, height or year. Height of the individual one. Height of individual two, height of individual, and that is the phenotype score of the trait for each of the n individuals. That is easy to get. Okay, and also we genotyping score the genotype of each of the individual at the marker side. At this sorry, marker locus. We call, label them as X1 to Xn. Okay? 
So, for example, there are so many different ways to can you tell me something? What is the way you can build you know, the marker signal pattern? For example, this is a sleep marker. What is the way you know to score each of the individual to find out what is the general type of this? Each of the individual add this particular marker sound. Anyway. Say again. DNA array. DNA array, yeah, that is the one way, yeah. DNA array, yes. Yes, the sequencing. Okay. And also, for example, you run it here. If this particular site is shows some of enzyme called polymorphism, you can identify it. So in other words, experimentally you can find out, you can group each of the individual to each of the possible genotype. You can do it. I will show you later on what they look like. Okay. So this are doable. So in other words, you can get the information of these, <coughs> these things. And now, what is the way to show how, whether or not the marker and the cube here are linked on the same chromosome? If so, how closely the marker and the QTR located each other on the Using the information of this. You look at the relationship between um, how often the two different traits appear together in some of You can score how many, how the both traits or how many of both traits of that. Mm -hmm. And that will tell you if it's exactly the distribution that you know that on different chromosomes which yeah. is simply a square. Because I'm going freely, you know, they come back. Yeah. You know, that is an in the 50, 50, 50. So, in other words, using this information to infer the range of the R in this question. If the R is very zero, okay, when well, that means the recombination is very, very tight. So we infer the QTR located very near to the marker. Okay. If the recombination is so frequent, let's say this QTR does nothing with the marker in that location. Understand? So now, the question going to the one, how to infer R using this information. The question becomes how to infer R in this model based on the information, phenotype information and the marker information. How to do it? You know, in your basic genetics, you have some most relevant genetics to you. You know, you, 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 you had a generic lecture, okay, before you come to family. What is the way to do the recombination frequency? How to, how to calculate the recombination frequency? In this very simple statement. You just count how many weeks you get. So, how many? So you, you, you do a cross. Yeah. Showing uh, all the past genotypes. Yeah, and then, you just, and then you just count all the traits. And then you Correct. Count the yes, that is the idea. Basically, if you know, you're making the, making the segregating population, making the cause and the generating segregating population. And then based on individual genotype, you calculate which genotype involves recombinant. And then, proportion of recombinant against the total of the individual chromosomes, that's the recombination. The key is here. You're correct. Provided you know genome type has the two rows. But the problem is here. You know the genome type of the marker, but you cannot know the genome type of the future. For example, this guy is very smart. Do you know your genome type of your height? No. 
<laughs> anyway, I give you an impression, I'm not just a joke, okay? I just give you an impression. Okay. It's easy to understand it, to know the genotype of the sequence. Okay. You can have your genome sequence. Okay. Provided you have a lot of money, you can make a very, very high confidence. All different types of variation of the genome. Genotype. Genotype. But you can know only your phenotype of the heart. You don't know what exactly what is the, what is the phenotype, uh, the, the, the genotype of underlying hypercuture. Okay, that's the difference. Okay, how to do it? But we still wish to get the job turn around. What is the way? So for example, okay, in the F2, you have capital M, capital M, capital M, little m, and little m, little m. Okay, expected frequency is a quarter, half, and a quarter. So that is enough. Okay, given this occurrence, each of the, each of this, 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 you know precisely, and they still you know, have this population frequency. So individual x, i x to x, and they may take it exactly one of them, one of these three, with this prior probabilities. Okay? You'll know exactly what they are. However, and again, there are three possible QTR under this setting. Okay? And this QTR, the genotype is very possible. And still, that the point is you cannot observe that. Okay. You cannot say that. You cannot say that. Okay. And then what do we do? Also, we don't know exactly what the individual future is in time. But Given this segregating population, or F2 population, we can infer possibility of an individual QTR genotype given its marker genotype. For example, if an individual, if one individual, F2 individual, has a marker genotype, capital M, capital M, this individual has three possibilities to take one of the three possible QTR genotype. Capital Q, capital Q, capital Q, little Q, little Q, little Q. Have these three possibilities. The degree of the possibilities depends on the combination frequency between these two sides. The first one is 1 minus r in power of 2. The second possibility is 2r times 1 minus r. The third possibility is r squared. Okay? So that is what they say. Using the marker information under this model, you can revert the information of the QPR genotype. You can learn the possibilities. You might don't know exactly, but we can anticipate what is the chance of an individual to take one of the three possible QPR genotypes. Okay? This is what we, what, what, that is the idea. Yes, of course, the degree of the informatives of the QTR, of the marker genotype, regarding the QTR genotype, depends on the relationship characterized by R. You can say, in this model, if R takes zero, if R takes 
prime of zero. In other words, marker and the QPR locate on the same, same site. You know, marker genotype, you know exactly what is the QPR genotype. For example, if R is zero, if you know this individual has a capital M, capital M at the marker level side, you know exactly there is only one possibility. That individual must have, must have capital Q, capital Q as the genotype and as the criteria. Good idea. Okay. However, if R takes another extreme value, if R is half, in other words, QTR located on a different chromosome. The gene segregate on the QPR, independent of the chromosome. So the marker provides no information regarding the QPR genotype. If R equal to all, what is the first line will be? You can work out that. Okay? So this, this table give, provides a theoretical basis how to link the marker information with QTR genotype information. This joint distribution between marker genotype and QPR genotype provided of the basis to work out what is the relationship between the marker and the QPR. So this is a little bit fancy, you know, the how to build up the this is a kind of theoretical assumption about the makeup of the QT, uh, uh, quantitative low side phenotype. You know, in the previous slide, going back to the how look at what is the Y I means, Y bar, Y to Y, Y, that is the phenotype of the F2 individuals, right? So I see individual, you can put it in this way. For example, this is the height of the crop of the IC individual in F2 population. Okay, we decompose this into this statistical way. This is a kind of theoretical assumption. Okay, first the part is the average mean, is the mean. Everybody shares the mean, share some height. The variation just because the genotype as the QTR and the environment, this bit, this is a QTR contribution the QTR you are working with. Okay? So that is an additive effect and a dominance effect and with some of coefficient I will interpret in what the coefficient will look like. Plus epsilon i. This epsilon i presents the effect of the environment. So this is clearly it's a linear model. Okay? Satisfy our general feature for quantitative traits, phenotype. Genetic part and the environment part, this kind of combination. Okay, because that is a quantitative trait. It must contain genetic component and the environmental component. Okay. So what is the Kasai and the theta look like? Okay, that is because I is basically what the genotype is. Okay, so if you know the genotype as a marker, oh sorry, as a QTR, you know precisely what this y i will be follow the minimum. Okay, if you plug, if you know them, you put them in, put the plug this one. To prevail the linear model, you get this. Again, as I said, we don't know that. We don't know that. But the one thing is here. OK? 
Okay. Go back to the one before last one uh, slide. Okay. You have X I and the Y. You know this? This is nice. Okay. This F2 population. This is the phenotype. This is the genotype. The genotype must be one of these three possibilities. So in other words, you can group the individual of F2 population according to the marker. Okay? So in other words, this individual can be grouped into three groups. Capital M, capital M, capital M, little m, little m, maybe. Group of them into three groups. And then you can calculate the mean of their phenotype for each of these groups. Can't you? Yes, you can. This mean look like this. This is the group of the mean of the phenotype for first group. This contains all the individuals whose marker genotype is capital M, capital M. Second group, third group. So say this is the mean to calculate it. That's no problem they can calculate. And then if you plug this linear model into this string mean, that look like this. Very simple. This is what it means statistically the same if r equal to half. If r equal to half, this is gone, this is gone, this is gone, this is gone, this is gone. Leave the three means the same. If the r is not the half. This three means will differ to different degrees, extent. In other words, whether or not this three means are statistically homogeneous, the same, whether or not this three means are the same, indicates the value of R. In other words, to test whether or not the marker and the QP error are linked together is now turned into a question whether or not these three beings are different. Yes, we have so many different ways to test the significance of the difference among means. What is the way? And tell me what statistical way do you really take to test the significance of difference between means? G test. G test. Good. Something else? No. No. Anova. Anova. Good. And anything else? Are you really non parametrics as well? Good. Yes. Yes. There's a lot of non parametric ways. Well coaxing, okay, and uh, wellly, wellly ranking test sort of things. So many different ways. Right. So in other words, you have your way to test the difference, and then this way is a difficult idea to test the result of the career or linkage of the model. That is the way, that is the basic principle. So where is the, where is the 
结束以后，你还有还有两个同学，今天我们那个 project 是你同学你们 project 是没有，我可以给你们讲一下。一会儿吧，一会儿，这个结束以后。
So for example, so for example, okay, please, okay, so for example, you could say plug into off to hall. You say this three means look very similar, and that means you know, and the QTR is inferred. Freely segregating with the marker, in other words, they are on the different chromosome. If this test is significant, that means. So that is the summary of this. Okay? That is the, basically, 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 That is the way, and then you say this model is very simple because we consider only one. Contains the genotype of the two markers. Okay, so 
If I can do the one interval, what do they call this is the interval, using these two markers to make the intervals. In other words, each of these two pair of markers make chomp the whole genome into individual you know, intervals. So if you can do one interval, you can do another interval, and then you can repeat the analysis. And then finally, realize genome-wide scan for the QTR. Okay, I won't. Well, I will not go into into detail because it involves much, much more sophisticated statistical tools to analyze this sort of data. Well, well, x one, x two, x n means the genotype at the two low side that is more sophisticated. Okay, I just give you an example. You know, for example, you have QTR located there, 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 and then the marker located, located at 0, 5, 10, 15, whatever. You know, you have this marker. And then, you know, this interval mapping can perform in that way. They can do in F2, and then you cross F2 in the way you get F3. To okay, you can say what is the performance. So this curve means the likelihood profile of the QPR. Higher of the profile, that means the likely, more likely the QPR location. You can say this is straight mode, very consistent with the location of these markers, of these QPRs, sorry. Okay, but you can say using the more advanced in the crossing, the narrow of the QPR mapping is because that contains more recombinants. More precisely, okay, I know the out of, out, out, out of the window is more interesting than this, because no, but this is also interesting. In other words, we have the way, basically, to mapping the location of the genes to control phenotype Okay, this is a video where we designed the one. Okay. And uh, so I published this so the professor I published this this one. Yeah, basically I developed the methodology for that kind of stuff many years ago. Okay, and uh, Anyway, so that is a summary. You know, this involves a lot of you know, statistics that is not, not that much required for, you know, for preparing your exam. I won't, I won't go into statistics of the, of the, in, the, exam, in, the in the assessment about this, this because some of the, the stats could be the very sophisticated. That really is a specialist with statistics rather than your, your textbook statistics. Anyway, so. I summarize that, okay, this is what we do, traditional career analysis. We have genetic markers, we have population, uh, segregating population information. Okay, for example, even segregating population, I, I told you before, even back across the two different forms of digital population. That's what I would say, different population structure information. And using that, we can bridge the genotype, that's the structure of your genome, and the phenotype of our particular quantitative traits, you know, by mapping where they are. Okay, that is the first step. That's a basic idea. Okay, the problem is no mapping resolution. Okay, because you know, you will find out the, the location of the 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 the, the, the QPR. Because this mapping the region below, that means the location is a very large chunk of the genome region. So in other words, from the QPR mapping to identify the underlying gene for that QPR has a long distance to go because it's too broad. The size of the chromosome signal is a centimeter level. The gene, the size of the gene is just about Kilo base pairs. So that chunk of DNA is still too much. So you need a lot of work to really narrow down the location and then 
finally pinpoint to the locate of the genes. So that is what I call the resolution. There are too many genes. Because in the tertiary region, that contains, may, may contains tens of thousands or tens of thousands of the complicated genes. Which one is causal genes affecting the phenotype variation of the trait? There's a lot of work is there. So it's a very, very, in other words, to identify precisely at molecular level, identify genes explaining the phenotypic variation of the complicated is really, really challenging and the challenging task. Okay. And uh, so that is how to bridge the gap between the genotype and the, and the phenotype. The normal way we call it to improve this kind of the the, 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 the resolution. Okay, using what we said. From genotype to phenotype, genotype to phenotype, you know, we have the northern layer of the information. Transcription, okay, gene expression. We know gene phenot sequence variants may control expression. Okay? Okay. And then expression may occur at an RNA level and also translation at protein level. It's another layer of Okay, that's a transcript transcript. And then the protein level, and the metabolic level. So that is why we call this module is a gene expression module. Okay, gene expression at different levels. So I think this one give you the idea what is, you know, summarize what is this module. You know, file even override what is really, really, how these different lectures are related to each other. Okay, we're talking about the gene expression. We talk about uh, um, sequencing at the, the, the genome, okay, gene expression, and the proteomics, and the metabolics. How this related to each other? This picture summarizes this relationship. Why we call the expression, the gene expression analysis is more given Anyway, so now I will, today I will give you some idea about, uh, you know, to put uh, these uh, two parts here and how to integrate the first parts in building the gap between genotype and phenotype. That is a fundamental question of genetics and the genomics, no matter what way. That is the most surrounding this kind of question, how to bridge the gap between genotype and, and, and phenotype. So again, I'll give you an example. And this is yeast. Okay, we have the two yeast parent lines. They are alcohol parent. When we build that, you know, probably some of it already been located. That is precisely the same stuff. Yeah, and then these two parents, okay, they differ at a phenotype, phenotype, quantitative phase, that is alcohol tolerance. And the one trait, one, one strain is highly resistant to alcohol in the medium. So, in other words, they survive very well. Even in the medium contains 16 off percent ethanol. And another one is a very free job. If there's only 1% of ethanol uh, uh, in the medium, they kill the cell. So they are so different, these two strengths. And then what my way is, what my goal is to basically to find all the genes, you know, the control of this tolerance gene. Okay? And uh, so, cross these two and then get the a segregates. Why segregate? We call the segregating problem the segregate here because the yeast we know we can maintain yeast at the half of it, right? So that means each of the cell contains the one copy of the chromosome, uh, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the genome. So the Existed in the half of it. So this kind of this kind of the, the thing, yes, of course, they simplify the problem a lot, but uh, you know. And then we use the microarray, okay, to prove that 
profile the expression, the data you analyze is come from all of this. Okay? And then the microwave, the microwave experiment, and also using the general type of business, the general basic, you know, the, the general basic uh, restricting, restrict size enzyme based polymorphism checking. Anyway, no matter what we're going to know, we're getting the data of the sequence of data as well. And in other words, we can collect it in general wide expression of the parental and also their segregants, the offspring segregants, and also their general type, general wide segregants, general type. What we do is trying to build this relationship. We have alcohol tolerance. This is a complicated trait. We have gene expression, gene wide. We have the genotype or structure variance of these genomes. Okay? And now how to build this relationship that is the core task of the things, of the, of the genetic genomics. Basically, you know. What we do is change the expression of individual genes as a quantitative trait. In other words, we are working here with thousands of quantitative traits. Each trait means expression of one particular gene. I told you how many genes in the list? How many annotated transcribed genes in the list? You just come and you just analyze the data. <laughs> and also we have this, and then we do the QFIR mapping okay, using the phenotype, using the marker genotype and the, the expression trait phenotype to get the location, the general location for the genes which regulate the individual gene. In order to find out what they are. And then this kind of things is also is a kind of QTR. But however, the trait we're working here is expression trait. So the QTR map for regulated that gene is called EQTR. In short, that is for expression QTR. Expression quantitative trait. Okay? Using exactly the same way as we do the traditional QTR mapping. Okay, I tell you the what is the recent genomics approach practiced. This has been done in uh, in a very wide range of diploid species, from very simple uh, eukaryotic species like yeast to human. And uh, so this analysis shows, uh, you know, uh, the natural genetic variation, you know, the sequence variation can significantly explain the difference in gene expression. For example, in other words, we find out that gene variation in gene expression can be attributed to sequence variation. In other words, there are so significant association between gene expression variation and uh, the genome structure variation. That is second. And uh, this proportion we call it is a heterophility. For some genes expression, whose variation can be explained genetically by 80%. In other words, heterophilic gene expression traits may be as high as 80%. So, in order for gene expression vary, we know expression may vary intrinsically by genetic control and also environment, we know this. But, uh, you know, in genetic component, may as high as 80%. And then this kind of regulation, the gene expression information, can be classified with two different classes. One is what we call the size, and another is called the trans. I will explain to you later what they are. 
So in other words, there are two different modes, which is size-regulated genes expression may be size-regulated and also may be trans-regulated. Okay. And then, trans-regulated is more often than size-regulated. I will cross chromosomes then. I will different ways, different, different locations. I will show you later on. However, regulation is a polygenic. In other words, some gene expression is polygenically regulated. In other words, whose regulate, whose expression is controlled not just by one factor, that may be controlled by several factors. So that is what we find out. I just Outlining uh, what is the basic findings of the EQT analysis. Okay? So, what is trans? What is it? I'll give you some of diagram about uh, to explain what is the trans. Okay? Give you this, this sort of things here. So, for example, if you gene expression, if the gene, if you investigate one gene's expression, this is the location of the gene. Oh, sorry. Oh, this is the location of the gene. This might be, this is the genome that located the various of the, 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 the places. And then, who's the regulator? This is the regulator of the, of the EQ here, of the regulator. Okay. For example, if the gene located at the same position of the regulator, so, in order the relationship of the EQTR and the gene whose expression is to be mapped at the same location, the location of this diagram, we call those kind of relationship of regulation and regulation relation of size regulation. In other words, the gene's expression is very likely regulated by itself or by the gene very near to it. We call that kind of regulation is size regulation. In other words, if the gene expression is regulated by a gene which is located at a different size, very clearly different size, different location, we call them size regulation. Or trans regulation. Okay. This diagram you explain, explain. In other words, size regulation or trans regulation is defined by location relationship of gene expression and their regulation. Okay. If the regulator located the same or nearby location of the gene, we call that gene is size regulated. Okay. If the gene expression and is regulated, located at a totally different, absolutely different location, we call that gene is trans regulated. That is, you know. I'll give you some idea why, you know, this is to give you some idea of what is, you know, basically, for example, if the genes, genes promote by some of the mutants, it's of course, you know, that could cause the variation in the, its expression. So we call that gene is size regulated. For example, if the mutation occurred on the transcription factors, so transcription factor is trans regulated. Okay? Because that may regulate many genes which are located far away from the regulator. So that will give you the more, for example. This, you know, this is a promoter of the gene. If any mutation occurred there, okay, so that EQT must map at the same location. If, if this is sorry, if this mutation and this mutation is taken as a marker, because it's a marker 
and the change was at the same location. However, if this is transferred to the transport factories, that regulated that any mutants in this, this, this gene that may cause variation of the target gene. You will map the expression of that gene somewhere else than the patient of the Okay? <clears throat> so there are some models. This one is just leave there. So there are different, uh, given the different name of the you know, genetic, you know, of the, the you know, uh, sequence, the marker variation and the gene expression. As a qualitative expression, quantitative variation, and uh, you know the sort of epistatic interaction. You know. Who did this for me? I don't know. Anyway, so this is important. This is important, and the not important things, you know, the future analysis will be able to build. Relationship between the sequence invariant and the phenotype of the of the of the of the of the, of the trait phenotype trait of the genome location. And the genetic genomics also may using this information allows you to build regulator network. This is very important. Just use this information. So this is information. So for example, here we have six genes. This is diagram. G one, two, six. And also we have one, two, three, four, five, six. And all the six, and no matter what this number does not matter. Okay, six markers. And this little star means the significance of the mapping. So for example, genes, the expression of genes is mapped at marker B. Okay. So the EQT regulated expression of gene 1 is mapped at the marker B. In other words, marker B shows significant <laughs> Linkage relationship with the genes control the expression of gene one. That's a different way to interpret. Okay, so in other words, the marker B also EQT error for gene one. Okay, different ways. And the expression of the gene two is a map of two locations, marker A and marker B, and etc. Okay, gene expression, the expression of gene 5 marked the A, B, D, and the A. So that is the relationship genes and the EQ here. Because we know, okay, using the sequencing information, we know where this marker located. Okay, so for example, this is the location of marker E on chromosome one. Okay, and then this chromosome, this is aromatopsis. We assume this is aromatopsis. Aromatopsis consists of five chromosomes. Okay, chromosome one to five. Okay, and then here, this is this information is independent of this. Okay, for example, okay, in this map, we know gene three share the common location of marker F and etc. So this map provides the location, physical location of all genetic markers and the all genes we are studying. Use these two stuff 
we can draw expression regulator network of the three six genes of these six genes. Okay, for example, gene one regulated gene expression of gene two and also the expression of gene five. In other words, the expression of gene one, gene two, and gene five is regulated by gene one. In turn, gene two regulated gene five. The point of how this is how this is deduced. That's not good effect, but I can give you. For example, why we say gene two is regulated by gene by gene one. Gene two, you know, is mapped at marker A. Is that correct? From that? Okay. How it works a marker A? This is a marker A. Marker A share the common location of gene 2. So we can hypothesize expression of gene gene 2 is regulated by gene 1. Okay. Because this marker here. So that gene, so in other words, expression of the gene 2, oh sorry, expression of gene 2 is a map. <laughs> the gene 2 is, is regulated by gene 1. Gene 2 is a gene, expression of gene 2 is a map at the location of the marker B. Okay. However, and then marker B and the gene 1 share the common chromosome location. So we can anticipate the expression of gene 2 is regulated by gene 1. Okay. And again, in turn, the expression of gene 5 is regulated by gene 2. That is because the expression of gene 5 is mapped at a marker A. However, marker A and the gene 2 share the common so this kind of sharing is of common location and also the map of the gene provides the basis to build off this regulatory network. So in other words, in this one, gene 5 is regulated by so many different Genes or regulation. Okay, and uh, gene five, and also regulated by marker C, no, not the marker C. So in other words, another size regulation. So gene five regulation are all trans regulated. You know, this type of the this kind of the, you know, the, 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 the deduction or reason you can draw this kind of the directed, we call directed So, after the lecture, when you go home, I hope you are going to check all these directions, this is regulation and the regulation relationship by, by yourself. Yes, I, I asked you, okay, don't blame, blame me some days. 
say about the mountain and let it ask to do so. I have let it to everybody when you're going back. You're doing this in my diagram. Okay? To reason in yourself, you can build this kind of relationship. For example, if you give this information and remove some of these arrow lines, ask you to rebuild the food. Can you do it? If you know the principle, you can do it. There is no mathematics, there is no statistics. But just for simple reason. Can you do that? Go home. If you cannot do it yourself, discuss with your friends or your fellow classmates. Okay, it's worse to do yourself. Again, I let you do. Do it. Okay? Now, get the principle. Because why I ask you this? <laughs> I don't tell you more. <laughs> but I must say, this is what we, what we offer. I offer you to do it on this. This is one, what we can do. Yes, so do you know this is important? Yes, of course. It's very important. You are going to identify transcribing factors. If we find out that, that genes spread a lot of points to other genes, it is very high, highly likely that, that gene is a transcribing factor. Do you think that useful? Okay, anyway, and uh, so what is the uh, advantages of genetic genomics? Okay, you can refine and search for QTR2 gene because of sometimes if you, you know, okay, you're using this kind of e QTR map and your traditional QTR map and put them together. If the if the, the regulator is also shares a common EQT analysis, do you believe that it, that the regulator is very likely underlying QTRG? If you have two maps, map one map phenotype of the trait, another map of gene expression, and then compare these two maps. Okay. If the QTR map, if the QTR region shared with the EQTR region. That EQTR targeted gene is very likely the underlying gene of the QTR. You know the, the, the point of it? Okay. If not, going back and think about that and then figure it out. That is one thing. And then network. And then this network without any prior information. That is a very, very good. Potentially, and uh, maybe used to any other expression profile data like uh, proteomic data and uh, metabolic data. And also, that gives you the idea to identify regulator relationship. That is what I said, insight into gene regulation. And then, probably link the different functional groups of the gene. This is what we say is very useful. And uh, that uh, kind of principle may be applied to different uh, segregating populations. And the disadvantage, very expensive work to do. And uh, now it's, it's fairly easy, this issue, because you need to you know, sequence a lot of things. And uh, also, what is a way to choosing the tissues to make the, make the work? And uh, statistical challenges. That is definitely, you know, very clearly obvious. And the computational challenging, you know, you know, say, for example, this is a little one, little dinosaur. This is a little small network. And if you really write a program to do it, that is, you know, really need to, because you need to cover, there is no logic in it, you have to cover, write the, the program, source code to do the job, to dealing with generic situation, that, is, that, is, that involves the computational demanding. 
And also you have to do a lot of tests, you know, the test the multiple elasticities. That is a multiple test is, is always choosing a problem. And also mapping resolution because it's a QTR. Still share the weakness of QTR analysis, and the mapping resolution is a problem. So reference. Okay? And then that is the one, you know, tell you, that is, you know, this idea, basically I developed this idea for QTR mapping. That is 1989. That is when I finished my PhD. That, is, that was my first paper published in English. And I believe it's definitely old than any of you. <laughs> okay, anyway, so I'm going to I'm gonna put the two papers there. And one is, you know, Generic economics was proposed by by this this paper. You know, this is definitely that's not my not my work. That is somebody else's work. The public in two thousand one. You know, there was still babies then. And then this one is a genetic you know, genetic genomics when applied into body. So that is you know the first author was my was my my, my postdoc. And she was in Russia, and, uh, and she did this work, and, uh, and then. So this paper is also the paper for tomorrow. So you guys going back now, and then you know, read the paper, and bring your comments okay. here.